Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming. It's lovely to see a big crowd again uh, today. So we're just going to kick off now. Okay, thanks, everyone, for coming today. Lovely to see a big crowd again from across uh, various areas of the university. Um, as you've seen in the email that was sent out earlier this week, there's lots of events and activities um, now back up and running, loads of events uh, over the coming weeks. Um, I'll highlight a couple of those at the end, but before I uh, go on any further, I'm going to introduce our first uh, contributor to the Coffee Morning series that we have a full schedule again for this trimester. Thanks to Will for organising that. We've a really good programme of, of speakers over the next while. So I'm going to introduce Ronan McDermott. He's from the School of Agriculture with Centre for Humanitarian Action. His area of expertise is uh, disaster risk reduction, climate adaptation, loads of experience. He's worked in a few places over the last few years. So he's in Grongenham and I think Manchester as well. As, no, Nottingham, Nottingham. Um, maybe Galway a little bit as well. So um, he's back in UCD. He did a bit here before. So I let him introduce himself, talk a bit, a bit about his research. You might have a few questions and answers and then I'll just talk a little bit about events at the end over the coming week. So I'll hand over to Ron. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Thanks. Thanks, Owen. Uh, thanks, Will, for, for organizing the event. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Ronan. I'm based at the School of Agriculture Food Science. Just wanted to give you a flavor of what I do in terms of uh, my, my research. Um, but first, uh, just a, a, an overview of how I understand governance within the context of the interrelated fields of climate adaptation and, and disaster risk reduction. So I view climate adaptation as basically a, a subcategory of uh, disaster risk reduction. So that's why I treat them uh, together as part of a single uh, overarching research agenda. Within that research agenda, I have three broad themes, hopefully somewhat interrelated, coming together under that general umbrella of how we identify the enablers and barriers of effective governance for both uh, climate adaptation and disaster risk reduction. So just briefly, a little figure just to try to understand how um, I relate kind of governance uh, interventions, responses with uh, climate and other uh, risks primarily to, to um, societies, so individuals, households, communities, but within a broader kind of socio-ecological context. So on the x-axis, we have um, uh, an increase in uh, uh, climate or uh, other kinds of uh, risks and impacts, both direct and indirect. And as these risks and impacts increase, we have various um, governance responses which result in, in certain uh, states, uh, whether it's stability, flexibility, or change. And the basic trajectory is to move from absorptive capacity with respect to climate related shocks and stressors. So absorbing impacts of, of climate to more adaptive responses to ultimately uh, more longer term impactful transformative uh, capacities. So inculcate, inculcating these capacities within the societies that, that, uh, that we are interested in. So applying these, this broad uh, meta framework to, to the research, um, I, I guess there are three kind of um, uh, themes that form uh, part of this research agenda. The first, looking at how accountability can be enhanced within climate adaptation and, and disaster risk reduction. Those who are exposed to climate and other uh, climate related hazards, other hazards, how uh, are those accountability mechanisms established uh, with uh, various uh, duty bearers at different levels within uh, the governance system. Um, relatedly, how do we learn uh, more quickly from past uh, impacts, past uh, disasters? Um, how do we understand the root causes, the risk drivers of past events in order to inform future learning? So to learn locally from past events, but also to scale out that learning to other contexts in which uh, uh, risks are, 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 are posed. And then finally, uh, a theme focused on, focusing on mobility and its interaction with risk for individuals and households exposed to various climate related risks, flooding, drought, et cetera. What kind of decision-making takes place at the individual and household level that um, 
results in different mobility outcomes uh, and various outcomes related to livelihoods as a result, either in situ in areas exposed to risk or in destination contexts uh, where people might uh, migrate or be displaced uh, to. So in terms of accountability, just a few projects that I've been involved in um, with the Red Cross, we, we prepared a, a study interrogating Ireland's legal and policy framework for uh, a response to a disaster that would require international uh, assistance, um, perhaps somewhat speculative, um, um, but looking at the range of um, domains of uh, the legal and policy system that would be uh, needed to be adapted in order to, to accommodate, to facilitate and re regulate an international assistance in, in the case of a, uh, of a, a major disaster. Um, Another study focusing on informal settlements. A lot of my research focuses on, on the global south. The map shows an informal settlement uh, outside Bogota and Colombia, um, looking at how uh, um, risks are understood, perceived by uh, um, uh, individuals and households within uh, this informal settlement, which is exposed to um, various landslide and other uh, related risks. And then the but final project uh, under this banner uh, is an ongoing project funded by the Dutch Research Council, where we're exploring how digital participatory platforms, the ongoing digital transition, how people are engaging with various governmental actors, and what kind of impact that has in terms of how we develop a better understanding of the risk scape and uh, better interventions in order to address that risk. Um, just to give you uh, a further idea of that project, um, we're looking at the use of a digital participatory platform, which was introduced already in 2009. So an early introduction of, of a platform of this kind in Surabaya, Indonesia. We we're looking at a particular district, coastal district, exposed to, to, to flooding, tidal flooding in particular, um, and examining how the introduction of this digital, uh, digital platform has over time impacted upon how risks are communicated from residents to uh, uh, stakeholders at different levels, looking at the functionality of the digital participatory platform, various processes of inclusion and exclusion that is enabled by the participatory platform, and the ultimate impact upon um, uh, risk uh, assessment and risk uh, mitigation. So the second key theme focuses around Around, around learning. Uh, you see causal loop diagram that's developed uh, as part of uh, uh, a project um, looking at uh, disaster risks in Quito, Istanbul, uh, uh, Kathmandu, and, and Nairobi, whereby we uh, brought together uh, different stakeholders within each of those city settings uh, technical disaster managers alongside urban planners, uh, alongside other sectoral experts who um, haven't been or, uh, communicating uh, to the extent possible concerning uh, past events that had occurred in the city and what could be learned from them. So the, the causal loop diagram uh, method, we were able to kind of iteratively uh, develop a greater kind of cross-disciplinary, cross-sectoral understanding within each of these con contexts to enable to enable learning. Another initiative um, I, uh, Owen mentioned, I, I, I was recently in the Netherlands, um, I was involved in a climate adaptation platform, which I think might present maybe a prototype in Ireland as we're becoming more conscious at the policy and societal level around uh, the need for climate adaptation. This was uh, a platform in uh, in the northern northern Netherlands, combining various educational institutes from university, uh, technical colleges, um, uh, around research and education, plugged into the risk assessments for the northern northern Netherlands and the various um, iterative kind of interventions that were planned over the coming years related to that. So research needs, educational needs, plugged into. Um, the, uh, the risk profile in the region and the, the strategies to, to address those, those, those particular risks. In the Northern Netherlands, by, by the way, uh, affected by uh, minor earthquake risk, but uh, 
significant uh, risks from uh, related to to uh, um, heat stress in urban contexts and um, flooding, saline intrusion in in coastal areas. And then uh, yeah, another example relating to neighbors and barriers of adaptive flood risk governance, looking at um, multi-level um, uh, you know, collaboration between different levels within cities in Wuhan and in, in, in China and uh, in uh, Maastricht in, 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 in the Netherlands. Then finally, third theme, mobility and immobility often focuses on those who migrate, but those who are displaced, but what explains immobility, attachment to, to place, emotional attachment, cultural attachments, attachments due to livelihoods and so on. An ongoing project, we're looking at coastal um, communities affected by saline intrusion in, in Indonesia, um, Mekong Delta in Vietnam, and Manila Bay in, 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 the, in the Philippines. Um, it's related to kind of slow onset natural hazards, kind of a relatively overlooked um, area with respect to climate mobility, where we have a slow onset natural hazard like saline intrusion, like um, ever increasing tidal flooding and sea level rise. What are the dynamics within the households, within uh, individual psyches around the need to, to move, to um, engage in uh, cyclical uh, migration patterns and so on? um rapid onset natural hazards um where you as an an individual or household have less time to to uh prepare uh, uh with a volcanic um hazard for example you have typically one to two day kind of warning um i was looking at mount merapi the most active volcano in in uh in indonesia where okay you have a one to two day early warning window, but you're conscious that this is the most active volcano in, in Indonesia. Um, government has declared a red zone around the um, around the epicenter of the volcano. Um, those who are settled there are being encouraged to 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 resettle. Um, how do we as uh, from a governmental perspective reconcile you know, a right to remain within uh, uh, your your home versus um, the positive obligation on governments with respect to the right to life to um, address risks to life. Um, so this is all feeding into kind of this narrative more broadly around managed retreat, um, how we uh, um, identify areas for resettlement, uh, areas exposed to um, various uh, risks, both slow onset and and rapid onset. Also some work on ongoing relating to um, hydroelectric dam building and the trade-offs involved in terms of uh, energy production, green energy production, right? Versus impact on, on livelihoods, loss of land, um, et cetera. How, how do we uh, understand those trade-offs? How do we, uh, how are they reconciled in practice? How can they be better reconciled um, as we build a lot of infrastructure with with the, the green transition ongoing. Uh, so that's a bit of a snapshot of what what I'm up to, um, um, and yeah, as Owen mentioned, I just joined in, in May, so I look forward to getting to know the broader Earth Institute uh, membership, and we'd delighted to be involved as a climate fellow as well.